Yo, Elliot, for a long time, I have been a womanizer, indulging in girls through multiple relationships at a time. I recently, by the start of this year, met a girl and have been in full devotion to her because of the purity and innocence she possesses, and she's shown. I cut off all other girls, trying to come clean, yet, from time to time, they try to get back into my life, and I allow them to through chatters, small talk, and sometimes the exchange of gifts. It's very passive. I don't see any of them. It just, it's just small talk. Yet it's very wrong to the girl I'm with, very wrong to me too, very wrong to my religion and society. However, I've fallen into it many times, and recently the girl, the girl I'm with found out, and after lengthy arguments, she decided to give me another chance, stating she does not want to ever see this again. It is easy to build castle in the sky and claim not to be susceptible to failing, falling into this again. So I want your thoughts on this. The other problem is lying. I'm someone who generally lies a lot, the least of which is tri trivial lies. I never saw harm in doing this, but now I see how detrimental it is to my life and I want to put an end to it. I can't expect to change overnight. I need your thoughts on this. So this relates just to, to personal will and self-power, your willingness to, to, to deny yourself. It's not to say that you're never going to have lusts, right? It's not to say that you're never going to have desires. But whether or not you participate in those desires is totally an act of the will. And so I like to often uh, use the analogy. You know, when, when, when I find that men are struggling with lust for women, I say, what would you expect, to, expect me to tell you if you were obese and you were addicted to donuts and McDonald's? What kind of advice would you give somebody like that? You would say, first of all, well, get all of the McDonald's and all the donuts and all the junk food and all the trash food and sugar and, you know, bad food, junk food out of your house. You have to you have to purge your house fully. You can't be trying to lose weight, but yet you got a, a, a pantry full of junk food and a freezer full of ice cream. What does that mean relating to you? These women who were once a part of your life that now say try to come in from time to time, you need to block them completely. You got to block them from your social media accounts. You got to block them from your email. You got to block them from your text message. You have to metaphorically kill them in your mind. You got to kill them the same way that the fat guy killed the donut maker. There's no such thing as donuts anymore. They don't even exist. If a donut passes your face, you don't even see it. It's like it doesn't exist, right? These, this calls self power, personal will. This is having control, self-control. And best way to have self-control in these instances when you know you grow weak is don't subject yourself to the temptation. Stay away from the other women. Block them. Delete them. Unfollow them. Ghost them. Ghost every single one of them, right? If you are what you say you are to me right now and you're not lying, right? Which is, I want to be with this woman. I want to make her my wife. Once again, I see no point in dating. I see the point in courting. Courting means I'm dating with the intention of marriage, right? Whatever you team marriage to be or visualize marriage to be, but it's a lifelong commitment to the soul's growth of that individual through our union with God. It's a triangle. Marriage is a triangle. Like I said before, it's a commitment between you, her, and God, and you sound like a religious man. So you don't want to let God down, right? Allah's watching, <laughs> right? So... Uh, you try to cut them out, but they keep coming back because you're leaving the back door open. You got to cut the back door out completely. You got to close the back door. Close the back door and never think back. Never go back and put all your focus and put all your eggs in this, in this basket. If she's the girl that you say she is and you're the man that you say you are, you got to start adjusting your mind towards making her your wife. Right? Making her your wife and making a family now becomes a new form of motivation, a new form of inspiration, a new reason to double down on your efforts and stop being a fat, lustful bastard, right? 
I see guys who are addicted to sex and lust in the same light that I see someone who's obese and addicted to food. It's no different. It's indulging in effeminate pleasure-seeking behavior. You got to put away the effeminate pleasure-seeking and the needing of validation and small talk and gifts from these other girls. Also think, what would it be like if you caught her doing that? I don't think you like it very much. You got to put yourself in her shoes as well. And then as far as your, you know, lying is concerned, you, you got to grow up and stop being so self-seeking, right? And the best way to be self-seeking is to dedicate your life to something bigger than you. You say that you're religious. I assume you're religious. Your name's Abdullah and you mention religion in your thing. I assume that you're Muslim. Are you even praying the way a Muslim is required to pray every day, right? Are you doing, are you disciplining yourself? Because these disciplines are a form of transforming the character so that you can carry these, this new, these new virtues into other areas of your life. A part of the reason why God through his prophets and his son, Jesus Christ, speak to us about what to do, what not to do isn't so much so that God could judge us, but it's so that we can hold ourselves to a higher standard. Thus, it supports the transformation of our soul, right? This is like a coach. I think of God as like the coach, right? God is the good, is the big strength coach in the sky. What does a good coach do? He tells you what to do, what not to do, and he places challenges in front of you. And it's the same thing here with you. You know what to do, what not to do. Practice your faith. And allow the challenges of life to purge your soul, mortify your flesh, and turn you into the righteous, honest, truth-telling, committed man that you know you could be. I want marriage to work. I want families to work. I, I realize I sound like a boomer. I realize that my hopes and dreams may be out of all proportion to what's available to this generation, but I can't give up my hope on that because I've seen what family can do in people's lives, good families can do in your life. I come from a good family, and I know that's a part of the reason why I'm blessed in my life, and I'm, I'm making a good family. I know what's good, and I also see the the the, the deleterious effect of degenerate families throughout this world. We are suffering because family can't, is not working. And the reason why family is not working is because men and women are not honest with each other. We're not honest with ourselves. We're addicted. We're effeminate. We're sick. We're sad. We're stupid. Make, I, I want, this is my, this is my mission. I got to get behind this mission a little bit harder. Maybe with the things that I say and the things that I teach and the way I, project myself into the world but I don't see any greater purpose on life in life than to make to families great again to protect the family you with this girl don't be with a woman that you're not going to make a family with you're wasting your time you're wasting her time and if you're going to make a family you need to transform your soul to be a husband to be the right kind of man to be a kind of man that can take that responsibility and handle it well. This is what it all is for you right now. This is a school. This is a challenge. This is a training. This is an opportunity for evolution. I'm happy that you can see yourself objectively and you realize where you're going wrong. I wish I could give you some magic bullet, but the bottom line is that you've got to face your demons. I wish somebody would come to my gym. I wish my, when I'm training somebody in the gym that I could just give them the easy button. Hey, here's a hack. Hey, here's a special diet that's easy that's going to make you lose all that weight. Hey, you don't have to struggle under those heavy weights or, or challenge your muscle with struggling and straining. You could just do it this easy way. It doesn't exist, bro, and it doesn't exist for you. I'm not going to give you anything easy. You got to be hard on yourself. There, if you want to change, you want to grow, you want to evolve, just like that piece of coal that turns to a diamond, how does that ugly-ass, black, nasty piece of coal turn into a diamond? Pressure, pressure. It needs pressure. Under that pressure, bang, it turns into a diamond. You need this pressure. Who's going to pressure you? You got God. Religion pressures you. 
I think a good part of the reason why, that religion exists is because it puts a little accountability on your plate. Religion is pressure. If your religion doesn't pressure you, if your religion says, oh, everything's okay, it's all going to be fine, you can make your life whatever you want it, and, it's, and God's going to love you, I think that's a waste of time religion. Just like a trainer that comes in and says, oh, you don't have to work too hard today. You're going to get exactly what you want if you think happy thoughts. You could have those donuts. That doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense. That's not how life works. Right now, you're weak. You need challenge. You're facing it right now. You recognize, damn, I'm weak. Force yourself. Be willful, right? This is when, you know, I, I, talk, I talk about things from different angles. And people say, oh, Elliot's contradicting himself. You should allow things to all just unfold in your life. Yeah, you should. When you're too willful and you're pushing too hard and you're too needy. But there are times... When you're being too soft, you're being too effeminate, you're being too pleasure-seeking, you're being too much of a, a sissy, a pussy, faggot, and you got to pick up your fucking sword and you got to do something strange, something strong, something hard, right? Something different. That's what I mean. Do something challenging. Do something hard. Cut these chicks out of your life. Cut them out of your life and have disdain for them. Because you know what they are? They're trying to derail you. They're trying to knock you off. They try, they're like demons. Women, in a lot of ways, are like demons. And I'm not saying women are demons, but I'm saying in your life, if you allow them to be such, they could be like demons in your, in your life. Right? This is, why, this is why the monks on Mount Athos never allow women on the mountain. This is why the early Christians would create separation between men and women. This is why even when women were around the men in the early church, they would cover their head. This is why Muslim men require or ask or even that Muslim women want to cover themselves. I, you know, I'm not calling for Sharia law in America. I am not Muslim. I, 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 I respect Muslim. I'm Muslim friends. But there's a lot of things that I see that Muslims do. And I'm like, I kind of get it. I get it. I see what they're going with that. Right? Covering up the women. That's a part of the reason why. <laughs> So, right, so that, so that women are respect, when a woman covers herself up that way, she's respected. She's respecting. She's being respectful towards you. She's saying, look, I'm not, I'm not going to allow my seductive nature, my seductive power that I have over you to corrupt you and to make you, have you make bad decisions about your life. This is being respectful as a woman. And this is, this is I know I'm going off on a little tangent here about modesty and women and covering up, but... It's respectful to married women or women who are in commitment for other women to cover themselves up. It's respectful to them. It's, it's almost like it's being respectful to someone who's on a diet if you don't come around with like pizza and candy and cookies and say, hey, and it smell good, this good stuff, and eating it in front of you. It's like, why the fuck are you doing that? Of course, like, you know, it's my willpower. It's up to me. It's up to me as the man not to poke that girl. It's up to me as a man not to eat that donut, but why you got to flaunt that around? And it's respectful towards the women themselves who cover themselves up. Because why? Then, as women say, they don't want to be treated like a piece of meat. Oh, you just seeing me like a piece of meat, right? I'm not just, I'm not just for sex. But then why are you walking around? That's like, a pe that's like a pizza. That's like somebody come with the pizza and is like, is wafting the pizza. It's like, oh, don't be tempted by this pizza. Oh, you just want to eat this pizza. Why are you looking at this pizza? What the fuck? Because you over here wafting the pizza out in front of you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> speaking of uh, um, removing yourself from the temptation is really what I'm saying, right? Women have a seductive power over you. They have a seductive power over all of us, all men. And if they are flaunting it in front of you, whether they think they're doing it for themselves or not. And women don't dress like that for themselves. No self-respecting woman dresses for that because she thinks, she dresses like that because all other women dress that way. And women are followers. So if they're not willing to be respectful in their, in the, in, in their dealings with you, these other women, right? And they're seducing you and sending you stuff and you talk and you're engaging with them, you're stupid. But if you cut them off and they keep trying to come back, then you need to disdain them. I think it's I think it's good to have a healthy disdain towards seductive women, right? 
healthy disdain. I've spoken about this before too, right? Where like there because she's now manipulating my fallen nature. And of course, look, if 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 I lean on libertarian values, I say you do what you want, I do what I want. But you know what I want? I want to not have to deal with that, and so I'm going to disdain your ass, right? I'm going to turn my nose up to you. Her pussy probably stink, you know, sour grapes. Turn your nose up. Ill. When I see women behave that way, I just go ill. Right? Ill. Gross. Right? And that way, and, and you know, I actually learned this practice through dieting, right? Through, through meal plans and whatnot. I learned this practice through dieting because I used to tell myself, back when I was super lean, and I, ne I didn't eat cookies or candies. I didn't eat anything for like four years. Between the ages of like 24 and 28, I was, a, I was just, you know, I was on my purity grind. Right? That's when you got the willpower of a monk. And I used to say, oh, ice cream is ice cream. And, and think about it, though. Ice cream and cookies and, and cupcakes. Who eats that? Kids. That's for kids. That's for kids. Maybe women, too. That's for women and children. Grown man. Think about a grown man. Think about Joe Biden licking that ice cream cone. Think about a grown man eating ice cream. You look like a big fucking baby licking ice cream. Right. So you, I disdained it. That's my point. Disdain the ice cream. Disdain these women. Ugh, that's 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 nasty. Get that away from me. All right? So anyway. So, yeah, that's right, Paul. Not worthy of your interest. It's not worthy of your interest. They're not worthy of your interest. This girl that you say you're in full devotion to, she's worthy of your interest. Don't fuck it up. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.